Welcome back to our continuation on positional of uh, the vignettes on positional information. And what we're going to do in this one is we're going to address the so-called French flag model. And as I told you uh, several vignettes ago when introducing the idea of positional information, this is something that's attributed to Wolpert, Lewis Wolpert. There is an article in this book on theoretical biology by Waddington, uh, edited by Waddington, where you can see what Wolpert had to say about it. But it's now canonized under this notion of the French flag model, and I want to say what that model is, and then we'll try to explore what its experimental implications are. So you'll recall from last time that we were able to solve the steady state reaction diffusion equation. There were two processes in play. One of them is the synthesis of protein at the anterior end of the embryo, the other of which is the degradation of protein along the entire length of the embryo. And together, those two processes conspire to give rise to this exponential profile, which you see right here. And the thing that I, that I want to say is that we can call this position, uh, sorry, I, I don't want to use that notation. I'm going to call this particular uh, point uh, X star wild type. And what I mean by X star wild type is that that is where the threshold is that crosses between the blue and the white fates. And we can solve for that. So Bitcoin at X star wild type is equal to uh, is equal to Bitcoin of zero e to the minus x star wild type divided by lambda. And this is equal to the threshold concentration. So that's the idea. So in a brilliant conception of an experiment, Nusslein Volhard and Driever, or Driver, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, had the idea, well, what if we could change the dosage of the gene, which I'm going to interpret for the purposes of this discussion as this prefactor. So that's the gene dosage. Now, you could say, well, maybe, you know, maybe by tuning the number of copies of the gene, it would do something other than just affect that prefactor. That's a good concern to have. And Thomas Gregor's group, to the best of my knowledge, has actually carefully checked that point. And what they find is that the only thing that changes is, in fact, the prefactor, the one that I'm showing you here. So this raises a super interesting prediction. Qualitatively, if I were to create a gradient in which I increased the level of the gene, then I would expect to see something like this. You know, it would still be the exponential profile, but now the threshold would be moved over here. So if I increase the gene dosage, then I expect to move the, gra the, the threshold and thus the, the marker, for example, in this case, the cephalic furrow, I expect to move it to the right. And I think uh, I might have uh, an example of that for you to look at, uh, which is right here. So notice in these two cases, so this is uh, the gene dosage is this column. So the gene dosage is increased, and that means that the cephalic furrow position moves to the right in correspondence with the intuition that I just described. So that, that seems good. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to write down a condition for the position of the cephalic furrow or of any of, of the threshold. So X star mutant is the goal. That's what we want to find. And what I know is that Bicoid uh, at X star wild type is equal to Bicoid of zero e to the minus x star wild type divided by lambda. But I know that this has also got to be equal to uh, f times bicoid 0, e to the minus x star mutant over lambda. What is this? This f factor is the gene dosage. So what's the logic of what I'm saying? The logic is that if I actually create a new profile, described by this equation, then it's still, it's still got the same exponential profile, but the magnitude as associated with this prefactor is different, and the result is that there will be a different position, what I'm calling X star mutant. And so our goal is to find X star mutant in terms of the original bicoid of zero. So 
you know, you could, you could think of that uh, this way. So I have an expression which is 1 over e to the x star wild type divided by lambda is equal to f times 1 over e to the x star mutant divided by lambda. How did I do that? I just remembered that e to the minus something is the same as 1 over e to the something. That's all I did. And this tells me that e to the x star mutant divided by lambda is equal to f e to the x star wild type uh, divided by lambda. And now I take the log of both sides. Uh, let, me, let me be more careful. So log of this quantity is going to be equal to the log of this quantity. And that tells me that x star uh, mutant over lambda is equal to f plus uh, wait, I'm being sloppy here, sorry, log of f plus x wild, x star wild type divided by lambda, or uh, I can simplify that to x star mutant is equal to x star wild type plus lambda times log of f, where f is the gene dosage. Let's make sure that qualitatively this does what we expect. F greater than one implies that log of F uh, is, is positive, is greater than zero, and therefore we have a shift to the right. If F is less than one, then that implies that log of F is less than zero, and so we have a shift to the left. How do I know it's a shift to the right or the left? All I'm doing is asking about the sign, you know, the sign that's going to be in, in front. Are we going to take the original position and add something to it or subtract something from it? That's all. If we add something, that means we shift to the right. If we subtract something, we move to the left. So that's the prediction of the French flag model at, in its sort of most naive incarnation. That's what we've just done. So we've gone through this model, uh, you know, effectively what we've thought about was this picture. So I should have shown you this actually, rather than just making my own little drawing. But you know, you can see that there's a wild type and then there's a mutant. In this case, the mutant has a lower gene dosage. So in this case, it's a log, uh, sorry, it's a half. And so that shifts the pattern to the left. And I wanted to just tell you that some the experiments are possible using the trickery and beauty of the molecular biology that's, that's available in the fly, doing various crosses. And so you can tune the gene dosage, and in, in Gregor's group, I think they did all the way from like 0.5 to 6 as the, the range that they considered. And so qualitatively, I already showed you this result, but let's look at it again. So qualitatively, we see that as a function of the number of copies of the Bicoid gene, the cephalic furrow position actually is shifting in the, in the right direction. So that's to say qualitatively, it's doing exactly what we would hope, but I really want to close on this note which is this particular graph, which is an amalgamation of the results from Newsline Volhard, but also from Thomas Greger. The Thomas Greger results are the ones with Bicoid GFP. And what I hope you take away from this is that, you know, the, the, the discrepancy is a quantitative one. Now, I've had discussions with people, and they will say things like, it's not surprising, or all models are too simple, or whatever. But I view that as a complete cop-out. The data is demanding us to do better. And in a way, if you like, we could say that the, the naive model falls short, and now it forces us to think hard about what the next steps might be, which is the, that there's a second gradient coming from the other end, just to give you one example. 
you know, there's other things to think about. Maybe the gradient is not uh, in steady state. You know, like there's all these interesting ideas that one can, can propose, take the pathetic thinking, turn it into mathematics, and then try to find out what the consequences are and drill down into understanding this. You know, this leads to philosophical discussions about how should we s spend research money? What constitutes a good use of time and resources and energy? And I am of the belief that some subset of those practicing the biological arts need to be trying to dig into uh, making sure that we know what we're talking about in these sort of quantitative settings. Of course, there should be other people that are launching with the complete unknown and making all sorts of interesting and surprising discoveries. And it's a balance of those. I don't think one to the exclusion of the other is, is a model to be um, admired at all. So that's the essence of the French flag model as far as where we are now. The next vignette that we will consider will be about touring patterns. And that will be an alternative vision of how spatial information can arise in the context of um, morphogenesis, just for example.